Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're gathered here today to remember and to celebrate the life of uh, Larry Wales. Um, he was 76 years old when he passed away on Wednesday, uh, January 18th. Uh, born in Traverse City, Michigan, Larry was the son of the late Donald Ray Wales and Mary Lou Wales. He was a retired computer coding technician. Uh, and he attended Foothills Church, where I am um, one of the pastors there. He was a United States Air Force veteran, uh, and uh, he served in, in the Vietnam era in, in the war. Larry enjoyed fishing, old-time radio, um, and woodworking, and, and some other things that we'll talk about. Uh, you know, I think it's safe to say that, that Larry's passing was a shock to um, everybody that, that knew him. Um, he, he leaves behind family. He leaves behind friends. Uh, veteran friends that uh, have been a part of his life that that he impacted and uh, he leaves behind people that are just deeply going to miss him but the thing about it is he did live 76 years and so he leaves behind people who just feel blessed to have had him in their lives for the time you know that, that God allowed uh, for him to be here and no doubt about it he's going to be missed like everybody that knew him is going to mourn him, the people that knew him and, and loved him. And that's a process, guys, that goes far beyond uh, today. But we're here to remember him in joy. We're here to celebrate uh, his life and the man that he was and his impact is still felt um, today in, in people that knew him and loved him and maybe people that just knew him a little bit. Um, and there's a song that has impacted this family. It's, it's a song called How Great Thou Art. Uh, a song that speaks of the awesomeness of God uh, and the sacrifice that God gave by sending his son Jesus Christ uh, to die that we might receive faith, that we might receive salvation. And it's an old song. You know, the, the words were written um, in the 1880s, uh, but that song is still cherished today uh, because the words are so meaningful. And God has used it to touch uh, a lot of people over the years, probably millions and millions of people. So we're going to just sit for a few minutes and uh, listen to this song, How Great Thou Art. And uh, if, you, if you know the words, feel free to sing it. But uh, let's just uh, play that for a few minutes. How Great Thou Art. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, 
When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow with humble adoration. I like that version of how great they are. I love it. I love it. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's anyone better that can um, honor a person that has impacted their life than um, friends and, and, and especially family members who have spent time with them uh, and, and been impacted in their life. And so today we're going to hear from, um, from Larry's nieces. Lauren and Rebecca and so if y'all would just come up and kind of share uh, some of your life with, with your uncle and we'd love that thank you all so much for joining us today as we celebrate the life of Larry or as we know him, Uncle Larry. <sighs> okay, so for those of you who haven't met, I'm Rebecca. I'm Warren. And so we're Larry's nieces. Um, and when Larry moved to South Carolina in the spring of 2006, we were like 10 and eight years old. Um, and we didn't realize at the time that we were getting like the fun uncle that everybody wanted. <laughs> Um, but he definitely was that to us. Um, as we've been reminiscing and, you know, going over memories and of Larry that we've had over the past few days, there have been no shortage of laughs um, and remembering all the fun we had and honestly all of the stuff that we put him through that was crazy. <laughs> um, growing up through middle and high school, Lauren and I would have many game nights with Larry at his house. Um, these nights included lots of card games, board games, um, and playing on the Nintendo Wii that we somehow talked Larry into buying for his home. Um, <laughs> most notably, we drove him crazy with the um, Michael Jackson, Jackson version of the Just Dance game, um, <laughs> which we played during the height of Lauren's Michael Jackson obsession. Um, and even though we drove him crazy dancing to We Are the World over and over again, um, he still got Lauren a starter pack, if you will, of Michael Jackson merchandise, which she wore <laughs> basically until she grew out of. <laughs> over the years, we have been known to play a few pranks on him that he probably didn't find as funny as he led us on to believe. <laughs> My favorite, personally, was turning on his heated seat in his truck without him noticing and trying not to laugh <laughs> as he was slowly burning up to a crisp before he realized it and turned it off. <laughs> Some of my favorite memories <laughs> spending time with Uncle Larry were our many lake days when, we would take, when he would take us out on his boat and we would spend the day swimming and fishing. While I do remember a few times we did successfully catch a fish, I think he simply just enjoyed teaching us and sharing his passion for fishing with us. I do remember one time I hooked two fish on the same lure and he could not believe it. We know he's back to doing his favorite fly fishing that he hasn't been able to do in the past few years. 
maybe he'll finally be good enough to hook two at once. <laughs> Um, and Larry always took in our best friends, Madeline and Kristen, in, like as his own nieces growing up, um, and he always let them join us. And I remember many New Year's Eves where we would spend the night at his house, the four of us, and we would light sparklers and pop little poppers in his driveway as like our own little version of fireworks, <laughs> which was good enough for us. <laughs> wow, we have no shortage of funny stories we could share about Larry. There are also so many thoughtful and heartwarming memories that we have of him that show how much he cared for us. After he moved to South Carolina and we started to spend more time at his house, he told us that he was going to let us paint the two guest bedrooms he had, each in a color of our choosing. Even knowing how much work that was going to be, he wanted us to feel at home in his house. And my room was like pink basically, by the way. So, um, as we got older, Larry supported both of us in our many endeavors. Um, as we both became teachers after graduating from Clemson, um, Larry made sure to help us get our classrooms ready for um, students in any way that he could. Of course, you know, he donated supplies to our classrooms, which we're both so thankful for. However, Larry took it a step further in my first classroom. I had mentioned that I wanted to have some sort of like area for my students to read. And so in no time, Larry got to work building a bench from scratch um, that's beautiful. And um, to this day, that bench still is in my classroom and it's still one of the like most coveted spots um, from our students. And even in the years after that, he built both of us a bench for each of our homes um, that have sat on our front porches and back porches, and we know that we'll remember these pieces of furniture um, or use them and remember him for many years to come. Um, in the fall, when my husband and I um, called to tell Larry that we were pregnant, um, I remember he was really happy for us, and um, I'll never forget, of course, he said that he already knew it, of course, <laughs> um, but he asked us if he would be able to hold the baby, which we said, of course, um, while he <laughs> won't be able to hold her on earth. I know that they have already met and they're getting to know each other really well um, before she makes her arrival. The most recent act of kindness Larry did to remind us how much he cared for us was in the months leading up to Christmas. Back in October or November, Larry texted Martin and Evan and asked them to give him ideas on what kind of jewelry Rebecca and I like to wear. He explained to them that he was going to surprise us by having custom <laughs> pieces of jewelry made for us by a relative of his, and he wanted to get something made for each of us that we would like. The jewelry that he had made for us is so beautiful that we are wearing them today. Um, and through all the years that we've spent with Larry, um, he never missed out on the opportunity to tell us how proud he was of us, even for like the smallest of things. Um, I know I speak for all of the family when we say that we'll miss Larry tremendously now that he's gone. Um, we will cherish all the memories shared here today and those um, not shared for the rest of our lives. Um, and even though while we may not see him um, again on earth, don't worry, Larry, we'll we're going to meet you again, and we'll play some more of those pranks on you that we used to play. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, that sounds like we could have went on for hours yeah. listening to some of the, some of those. Uh, some of those experiences. Um, that's what I mean. You know, it's like y'all y'all were super close to him, you know, and so the impact that he had on your life is that's something that's going to continue, you know, continue on. Um, we're going to sing a song today. I hope that, uh, you know, you'll maybe at least remember the, um, the chorus of this song. It's just called Because He Lives. Many of us kind of grew up singing this song. We sang it in church for, for a lot of years. Um, so let's sing that if, if, if you can remember the words. God sent His Son 
They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Because he All fear is gone Because I know, I know He holds the future And life is worth the living Just because He lives And then one day I'll cross the river, I'll find life's fine, no war with pain, and then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory, and I'll know He he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know I know he holds the future and life is worth living just because he lives. Y'all sounding good. So as we celebrate uh, Brother Larry's life today, uh, you know, I think it's good to think about the fact that each one of us in this room uh, had a different relationship with him. Everybody that knew him in here had a different relationship with him. Uh, Each person had their own struggles at times um, and their own joys and things that maybe were just between you uh, and Larry. Uh, And given a split second to think about it, I bet that each one, as we sit here today, can, can recall some great memories. Uh, many more than even Lauren and Rebecca, you know, shared today. Uh, and as we sit here today and, and you think about those memories, I want you to know those times uh, are gone, but they don't have to be forgotten. They can, uh, the good things that you learned from Larry, the example that he uh, showed in your life, uh, those things you can take with you. And, uh, you know, I think about, uh, there's a, a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson it says death leaves a heartache that no one can heal but love leaves a memory that no one can steal you know Larry was 76 years old when he passed away uh, and so so the thing about it is he lived a long life not a super long life right uh, my dad is 85 years old and when I think about him I think my dad should have a lot more years to go right I can see him living to be a hundred plus uh, that's what I would want because when we love people and they uh, pass on it's too early in our own minds right no, no matter when they pass on it's too early uh, but not necessarily in their own minds we all have our struggles uh, in life and we all have our victories and I, I know in my own mom's case my mom died you know four years or so ago and she was only 74 years old. I say only because, um, you know, I wanted her to live a lot longer. But my mom wasn't 
she didn't want to live a lot longer. You know, she was ready to go be with the Lord when she did. And I think Larry kind of sometimes is in that state of mind sometimes. He was just ready to go be with the Lord uh, at different, you know, different days, tough days in his life, things like that. Uh, he just wanted to go on and be with the Lord, you know, some of those days. And as we all know, life is full of ups and downs. It's full of seasons of joy and seasons of sadness and when I, when I lost my mom um, a couple years ago, that had an impact on me, just as, as Larry's death will have an impact on everyone here. But at 74, I kind of, I thought that was too young for her to go. And, you know, Rebecca and Lauren, you, you shared, like, the impact, just in a, a few short minutes, a little microcosm of, of your experiences with him. And I imagine there were tens of thousands, you know, of stories that could be shared today but he had an impact on your life he had an impact on on everyone here and so when someone we love passes on it's good to remember uh, to stop and breathe for a period in our lives to just stop and, and meditate a little bit and meditate on scripture about how temporal and how short life uh, can be psalm 41 through 3 uh, reminds me so much of larry because uh You'll see what I mean when I read it. Uh, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground, and he steadied me as I walked along. He's given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he's done and be amazed, and they will put their trust in the Lord. So, now Larry is free from burdens that he was carrying, and he's probably singing a new song. And from what I hear, his favorite music was country and uh, James Taylor, you know. So he's singing, how sweet it is to be loved by you, to, to Jesus now, you know. Um, and, and probably four of his greatest joys in life, the, the girls mentioned some of that, uh, were fishing, right, uh, his, his brother told me that his greatest joy would be if he could pull out a, was a trout as long as his arm. <laughs> you know? um, and so he, he loved fishing, loved woodworking, as you heard, um, watching Denver play football or apparently anything <laughs> that had to do with Colorado or, or Denver. And they have a bunch of sports teams. Uh, he loved old time movies. Uh, and so for a career, he was a computer programmer, as, as I mentioned earlier. But he retired from that profession after many years. Uh, and uh, he had two great loves in his life. If, if you ask him about his love life, he would probably talk about his dogs. He had uh, a couple, couple dogs, a, a Boston Terrier, and I don't know what the other dog was. A beagle, a beagle, yeah. Um, so those were great you know, loves in his life. And th they were good friends and good companions to him over those years. Uh, I was sitting with some of the family the other day, and I asked them what were what would be three of Larry's greatest qualities. And it was interesting to me because they right away said he was a generous and a giving man. That was the first thing on uh, several of their minds, uh, and and that he was kind. You know, generous, giving, and kind. Wow, those are those are three great qualities, um, right? But. Uh, Everybody also knew that he could be grouchy and full of doubt at times, too. Uh, so everybody's not perfect. None of us are. He needed encouragement just like all of us do at different times and seasons in our lives. He didn't have a, a go-to outfit. And I, honestly, I think the only times I saw him, he, he, he used to walk in our church parking lot. Um, he, every time I saw him, I think he had a hat, like a baseball cap on. Uh, so he didn't wear overalls or whatever would be his M.O., but that cap was, you know, was part of his ensemble, I guess you would say. Uh, Larry wasn't perfect. He had his own flaws just like I do, you do, just like any of us do. But there's something that we can learn, you know, from his passing. Uh, the thing about it is none of us should ever uh, expect one more minute or one more hour of life. His passing should serve as a reminder. It says in Psalm 103, God knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. Human life is like grass. We grow like a flower in the field. And then after the wind blows, that flower's gone. 
and there's no sign of where it was. And, and, and my point is, guys, life is brief whether we live 20 years or 76 years uh, like Brother Larry did. So it does us good to remember what's important in life. It does us good to, to cherish friendship, to cherish family. Uh, and, and, and if you have a problem with a family member, make amends with them. That's, that's what we need to do because life is short. You can be driving along in a car and in a split second meeting your maker just like that. Uh, so it's really important to know where you're at when it comes to eternity and, and faith in Jesus. Uh, you know, Larry, Larry was a veteran, obviously, uh, and he was extremely proud that he served in our military. And where he served, as we mentioned, was in Vietnam. But I, I worked for uh, a bunch of years um, for a ministry that served Vietnam vets uh, out of Fort Worth, Texas. And we traveled around the country ministering to veterans. Uh, and, and back then, a lot of them were Vietnam and, and other war veterans. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm at first hand can understand the struggle that Vietnam vets had coming back. What many of them had to deal with in the war was rough, but coming back to the lack of uh, accolades, to the lack of appreciation um, was worse for many of them than actually what they saw uh, in the war. So a, a well-kept secret these days is that, that war vets, a lot of times um, they have PTSD they suffer, but they also suffer emotional uh, damage and pain, feeling uncelebrated for that service for their country. And I know Larry battled some of those thoughts, but here's what happened in his life. The Lord put some people in his life, including family members, uh, loved ones, and some other veterans who faithfully served and, and loved on Larry and stuck with him even when he was full of doubt and uh, even when he would go into those negative uh, times in his life. So these vets are, are here. Some of them, Thomas Williams is here, Terry Monk's here, uh, another lady, Paula Hinger, uh, these guys that helped Larry get a wheelchair ramp, you know. Uh, God just used them in his life. And I'm telling you, these were, these were uh, bright spots in his life. And uh, I, I believe God showed Larry through the veterans that helped him and served him. The United States does appreciate him. Uh, there are people that appreciate him and, and love on him. And so they were able to help him understand that he actually was entitled to more money and uh, things worked out for him where uh, he saw that he was appreciated more. And uh, this was also a point in his life that uh, we know for a fact that Larry came to a marker in his life of putting faith in Jesus Christ. Where he prayed the prayer of salvation, uh, he might have done this at another point in his because he lived 76 years. But we know for sure around October of 2021 uh, that uh, Thomas Williams, who's sitting right here, actually led Larry in a prayer of salvation. They prayed together, and he gave his life to to Jesus for sure. You know that day. Uh, so uh, God God was working on him. You know, in the last years of his life. And uh, we're comforted and we know, you know, that Larry is now free of doubt. We know that he is uh, walking the streets of heaven. And guys, he doesn't have any physical pain anymore. He doesn't have any emotional pain. He, he, uh, uh, he is actually seeing who Jesus really is, who God really is, what heaven's really like. And um, now it's more real to him than he ever imagined when he prayed that prayer. Uh, you know, and, and as we close today, veterans... They have a brotherhood. I learned this when I was traveling, touring, and, and uh, working with vets all those years. Um, th there's a brotherhood. There's something that is strong, a bond, and, and the, the uh, pride of serving our country. And, and, and after some wars, whether they were, had accolades or not, they're still proud proud of what they did and so there's part of the brotherhood right here today and and uh, we believe that they should be celebrated for serving our country and so Larry served in the Air Force as an aircraft mechanic uh, and he was drafted and he immediately went you know and joined to serve in Vietnam so what we're going to do as we close today I'm going to close in prayer and then we will have a fitting military tribute for our brother Larry, just a final way to honor him, honor his life, honor his uh, impact in everyone's life and, and his service. So um, 
Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this man. I thank you for the life he lived. I thank you even for even bringing brothers into his life that, that follow you, that were able to impact him and point him to Jesus. Uh, Lord, I, I thank you for the fact that we know he came to faith in you, and now we know without a doubt uh, that he is, he is spending eternity uh, with you. And God, so... Uh, we pray now for the family, God, that you would just cover them, God, that grief wouldn't be too overwhelming, that they could grieve in the proper way, God, that depression would be far from them, Lord, and that uh, just uh, when they think of Larry, that they would think of good things and, and the good times and the life that they were able to share, God. So, Lord, we thank you for all these things, and, and we tribute him and the life that you gave him in the name of Jesus. Amen.